War Games is mentioned certainly in the Ready Player One book, but yeah. um, I don't know if it's in the film. I haven't seen the film yet. Um, what, what was an MSI 8080? Why does it look remarkably like the front of an Altair? Uh, because it was based on an Altair, maybe? The MSI 8080 was a machine that came out not long after the Altair. It's an S100 bus based machine, so S100 means that it had a connector, it had a backplane, but there was a hundred connections which carried the data bus, the dress bus, and all the control lines for the processor. The backplane didn't do anything, it was just a bunch of connectors. You'd have a, a CPU board, maybe a RAM board, maybe a serial board. You could expand it. So effectively it was it was pretty much the same as the Altair, but it kind of looked nice with its nice big switches. A little bit sort of PDP-8 style switches, nice big ones there. The LEDs that would light up on the front. Um, so kind of a, a sexy looking outer. They remind me of almost the front of, a, of an old VCR. Yeah. Now I can see some of them say address, some of them say data, some, some say input. I mean, how, does it, how would it work? You literally toggle in binary data um, and the LEDs would light up on the panel there. Um, with your binary output from it. So if you want to write data to address 0FF, then you would convert that into binary, you would toggle that binary in, um, and then you, in the same way, you would toggle in the, uh, the data that goes there, and that's it. So it's very, very time consuming. But actually, I mean, everybody talks about that and the way the Altair is done, and it's a very, very slow and tedious process. But quite often what you would be doing is just toggling in a few lines of code, or maybe just a jump even, that would jump to a bit of code in memory that would then initialize the disk drive or the tape or whatever. Um, so a bit of what they call bootloader code, um, just to jump the machine into life and get it talking to its peripherals. So you've got the address bus there, um, you can set the address, um, and then you've got your data, um, and you can toggle that in as well. And that way you can basically, it's like a poke command in basic, you can poke data into a certain memory location. Yes, you can use them like that, but ultimately these things, you could have a serial port. And if you had a serial port, you could hook up a terminal. Um, you might have a ROM in there, which might be basic, or you'd load basic info, or anything else, maybe CPM, from a disk, tape, whatever interfaces you had connected to it, you could get your data in and out. So it's not like we all just sat there toggling in code day after day um, in binary. A few people did. Um, but, you know, these things were a bit more usable than that. I remember when we looked in the Altair, there were all sorts of upgrades and changes, and would that be quite common on one of these as well, that people would just add their own different boards? And... Yeah, I mean, these machines were in for enthusiasts. You know, the people that were buying these um, quite often were electronics-y kind of people. Um, so, yeah, you would buy one and you would just keep making it better. And the same as everybody does with their PCs, you know, more RAM, more speed, more power. It was exactly the same. So yeah, the Altair, the original Altair that we have, isn't really much of an Altair left. You know, it was upgraded so much. This one was a bit different. It's had a bigger backplane in it. So it's got a Thinker Toys backplane there, so you can plug in more boards. And, you know, same thing would have been going on. Let's upgrade it. We need more RAM for our applications. You're really into computers, huh? Yeah. It looks to me like kind of quite a professional machine, so it's probably bending reality to have had the hacker kid with it sitting on his bookcase. Yeah, I mean, these things weren't cheap, so, you know, they were, um, you know, reasonably good money. So uh, whether Matthew Lightman, was that his name, I think? Um, uh, no, it's Broderick, something Lightman, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> was, uh, um, yeah, would have afforded to have one of those machines in his bedroom. I don't know, because it's the machine. It's just about to see a picture of their machine. Um, you've got the terminal that went next to it. You had his little speaker box um, so it could speak, um, and his VHS player on, on the shelf there. That's a fair old amount of money's worth of gear. Um, but maybe his parents were loaded, I don't know. Um, but, but, uh, but there you go, he had one. And they, I mean, were they bending it a bit with things like the speaker? Do you want to hear it talk? I mean, what sort of hardware would you have needed to have made a computer of that era talk? Um, I mean, there, there was basic speech synthesis out there, so it's it's feasible. Make mistakes. Yes, they do. How can you talk? Maybe it spoke a bit better than the actual real um, speech synthesizers did at the time. I mean, I can't remember when the SPO256 came out, which is a chip, which is a speech synth chip. You were linking those up to early ZX81s and things. But I mean, speech synthesis has been around some time, so um, it was kind of feasible. Maybe. Normally on computer file we get the lid off, we have a look around, but this particular one's being refurbished. Right? Yeah, so this one is a um, bit of an empty shell at the minute. So we have uh, one of our volunteers has kindly taken the boards out um, and um, is getting them working. 
So we've got there's a processor card in it, a RAM card. Um, the S100 is pretty standard, so you can test it in other machines. Uh, the Altair, he's already done. So we now or will very shortly have an Altair where you can, well, you could toggle in the data if you want, but we probably won't. Um, but we will be able to load in the, uh, the little program to just fill up with timing loops. And as those timing loops play, it interferes with the radio. The radio then creates tones. And you've got music. And uh, apparently there was this sort of award given for the first um, thing that they, they really made an Altair do of any use, if you call that of any use. Um, but hey, it's music, of course it is. Um, so yeah, it, it, so that'll be working, but also the next thing is to get the inside working as well. Um, so we're just getting the boards uh, done. Uh, then we'll refurbish the machine itself. Hopefully, you better come here and have a play. And we can take it to that gate because it's a yellow key, yellow castle, and we can get in there. Now, we have what could possibly be a sword, or maybe just an arrow. So we can now take that one, and we can come out. Is it one thing at a time, though? Yeah. Yeah, so you've got to have the right things at the right time. Um, so we can go this way, oh, but we can't.